Hey, good morning, YouTube subscribers. I'm gonna talk about something that's been on my heart for a while. Many of you have been emailing me about it, and I decided to get a beautiful view. Here you can see I'm up in the mountains. Uh, it's pretty cold this morning, so I'm gonna try to go quickly with no beanie on. It gets a little cold. Um, so bear with me here. I, and this topic is, of course, what you saw in the description about these people falling away from their faith. Uh, and salvation doesn't have to be maintained, but faith has to be nurtured. So that's what's happening. And if you're looking for the theological uh, under underscoring of this or what's happening theologically, I'm actually going to include a brief article I wrote in the description of this video. Uh, so you can look at that and get the kind of the theological backing on what my thoughts are on this. But I'm going to just cover seven things quickly that I think will help many of you. And we have to remember, uh, love does not label. So I'm just uh, sad to see some of these people out there. It looks like they're heresy hunters. Uh, Joshua Harris, of course, who wrote I Kissed Dating Goodbye, has come come out and said he's rejecting his Christianity. A uh, Hillsong writer, one of the Hillsong writers, is, is losing their faith. And so what is going on? Well, we need to love these people and not label them. Uh, apostate, I, I knew it. And, and I'm concerned with some of the hearts of some of these armchair quarterbacks and some of these critics. Granted, I'm all for labeling uh, when, when we need to. I'm one of the truth guys, so I'm there with you. But uh, love will draw them back. Labeling them will not. So that's the first thing we need to remember. Also, I'm going to look here at my notes so I don't miss anything. Um, we can identify with this. We shouldn't be surprised because the Bible talks about a mass falling away. So what exactly is happening? Well, here's a couple things. Uh, if you feed doubt, it grows. Uh, so here's what's probably happening in the lives of many of these people. Again, I don't know uh, them personally, and, and I can only speculate. But many of them, uh, they begin to feed doubt. They read books they shouldn't be reading by false teachers, and, and they just begin to drift from God. They say the Bible's so inconsistent theologically, and I, I would thoroughly have to disagree with that. Granted, we don't understand everything, but the Bible is not uh, inconsistent in regard to theological issues. Uh, I've thrown this question out there before. Show me some inconsistencies in who Jesus is, the nature of God, the character of God. There's not. There's things we don't understand, but it's a very consistent book. So uh, that, of course, is what's happening. If you feed doubt, it grows. And where you look is what you find. Where are you looking for God? Are you looking for him in the secular arenas? Are you looking for him in, in, in books by false teachers or teachers who don't talk about anything uh, deep with God? I go back to the old authors, A.W. Tozer, Leonard Ravenhill, the Puritans, uh, many of those guys, uh, E.M. Bounds on prayer. Read those books, build your faith. So that's uh, one of the points here I want to cover is, are you feeding doubt or are you discouraging doubt by looking to true sources? Also, Many people have religion and rules. So, okay, I got to follow all these rules. That's what Joshua Harris in his book said. You know, it's all about rules and not all about rules, but I can't kiss. I can't date. Uh, marriage is only limited between a man and a woman. I've got all these rules and, and this, this is religion. And I hope these people have a genuine relationship with Jesus Christ because when it's a relationship, uh, it's not about rules. It's about wanting to, to be closer to him and, and loving him and wanting to serve him. So that's a thing that, that's happening. Uh, people can sing like Hillsong. Uh, he's saying, all I need is you, but have you really experienced Jesus? Uh, so it's not about rules. It's about relationship. Also, many people are living a compromised life. And here's one of my concerns with this big movement. Uh, many in the Reformed churches, the Calvinistic movement, you know, making our own alcohol. And well, Luther did. Well, that doesn't mean it was right. Uh, we're getting caught up in all this 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 worldliness. And, and if you're filled with alcohol a lot, you're not filled with God's spirit. You can't be filled with both. And of course, this isn't about alcohol. I mean, compromise in general. Uh, more time on YouTube than ever before. More time on Facebook than ever before. We're living a compromised lifestyle. And you can't have one foot in the world and one foot in with God. You cannot serve two masters. You'll either love one and hate the other or be loyal to one and despise the other. So where, where, where's your heart? Where's your affections? Is there a compromised life? Is there a compromise in your life? Are you compromising? And I don't know these gentlemen, but is besetting sin taking over? Is pornography pulling you down? Is, is compromise and not fully surrendering your life? Watching movies you shouldn't be watching, doing things you shouldn't be watching. Because again, you don't, you can't maintain your salvation, but you can encourage your faith to flourish, or you can quench and grieve the spirit of God. So 
Uh, also, yes, uh, we can't rule out that many of these people might not be genuinely saved. They need to repent and they need to believe. That could be. Uh, we don't know, but that's, that's obviously an indication of what could be happening. So again, in the description, I'm going to put an article that might help on the theological uh, issues in regard to scripture. Again, people are divided. Whether you're a Calvinist or an Arminius, you're going to see this differently. Can I lose my salvation? Can I fall away? Once saved, always saved. Again, read the article in the description. But finally, and I had to write this down, closing. Here's my closing thought. Fully surrender your life, whether it's Joshua Harris or this other person from Hillsong. A mighty filling of the Holy Spirit will fix this because you're overwhelmed with the sense of God's presence, God's power. D. Martin Lloyd-Jones wrote about this in the last chapter of his book, A Demonstration of the Spirit's Power. He called it the baptism of the Spirit, which is controversial in and of itself, but um, I don't care quite on the theological term, but I want to make sure you got the power. Do you have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Are you filled with the Spirit of God? I can take you to D.L. Moody, Adrian Rogers, A.D.B. Tozer, Oswald Chambers, Samuel Chaddock, who burned his sermons and received the fire of the Spirit. So I see a lot of theological debates out there, but very little power. So that would be my encouragement. Fully surrender your life and return to Christ and let Him fill you with His Spirit and save you and seal you until the day of redemption.